The first order of business is we're actually going to be taking this off. It's not required, but he doesn't want this anymore. And it was broken by whoever worked on this car anyway. And I actually like the really exposed look. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. And let's go ahead and start dismantling the intake, the ECU, and the battery. Because your spark plugs sit underneath down here. And on your passenger side, they actually sit right here. Now the ECU is directly in front of it and to get everything that you need to get the spark plug out, you do have to relocate this ECU. So we're gonna move that, and we're also gonna start by removing this intake duct. All right, and before we get involved with anything that has to do with the ECU or anything electrical, we want to disconnect the negative terminal. Now, the thing is, is we're gonna have to remove this battery anyway, so you might as well remove the negative terminal as well as the positive and remove the battery out of the car. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is remove this intake duct here. We're gonna set that aside. And the next thing we have to do is remove this bolt here, which is going to release the air box. And then we also have another bolt down here, which we're gonna also remove. So let's do that now. And now that we have these bolts removed and loose, we're able to wiggle the intake box kind of out of its position. We're gonna have to remove the, the MAF sensor. So we're going to unplug it and then remove this box out of the car. So you just have to remember to remove the bracket off of your battery, which are just two 10 millimeter bolts that attach the strap over the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this now. And now we don't have to worry about any electrical interference when we're messing with the ECU or the spark plugs. And as you can see, now that the battery is removed, you do have access to both of your coil packs. This is cylinder number four and you have cylinder number two. And then on this side, once we remove this intake, you will have cylinder number one and cylinder number three. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to loosen the worm clamp that sits around this part right here next to the MAF sensor. And I found it easier to unclip the air box and actually pull the back half out first, which removes just like this. And you can leave your MAF sensor in there. Just be careful not to damage it when you're storing it. And then we're able to take out this part of the box no problem. And you can see you have the filter here. This looks like a K and N filter. So we're gonna put that there and we'll take this out. And now we have partial access. So before you begin changing the plugs, all we gotta do is remove the ECU from its location here. And that is done with these 10 millimeter bolts. I already started this one here. So you're gonna have another one here and then you're actually gonna have two at the bottom of the ECU that you're gonna have to remove. Okay, so now that we have the bolts out of the ECU, all you have to do is simply bring it upwards like this and you can rest it on the bracket. Just be careful of the wiring. And now we have full access to all four of the plugs. Like I said, you have one and three there and you have two and four here. So let's go ahead and remove the coil pack harness. So it's located right here. You can see there is a little pin or like a little brace that I'm pushing with my finger. What you have to do is you have to push that down and pull back. So it's easy to put a screwdriver right there on that little piece I was pushing and push backwards and it will actually unclip. So I turn the light on so you can see here, this is that little clip that you have to uh, pull back and push. So I'm gonna push it back with the screwdriver and push the whole mechanism back. All right, so I figured I'd add this to the video. We are having an incredibly difficult time getting these off of the actual coil pack. And that's kind of normal when you start seeing higher mileage um, WRXs, that happens. These really get stuck to the coil pack. So you can actually just result to taking off the little 10 mil bolt that is on the coil pack itself and just remove the coil pack and the harness assembly. And then you just put it right back where it goes when you're done. So usually I like to unplug everything and check everything out, make sure it's all good. But in this case, it's gonna be more difficult to do that. So all you gotta do is pull it out now like this with the entire assembly. And then what you can do is now that it's free to play with, you can actually pull it off um, there. So that's what I chose to do. So just to show you an example of how it normally works, you push back on this here and you slide it back like this. And you can see it's starting to slide off of the coil pack like that. And then it just completely unclips. So that's how you do that part. You just clip it off and then it comes off, but we're gonna remove the whole assembly. So this is what I'm using here to get the spark plug out. Just a little uh, joint or I call them a knuckle with a 14 deep socket and that'll pull the spark plug right out. 
Okay, so now we have all four spark plugs out of the car, and these are actually NGK plugs. So let's go ahead and open our new box of NGK laser iridium plugs, and we do have to do a very important step before we put them into the car. And here is our brand new box of the laser iridium NGK plugs. The code for the WRX is 96024, and that's what you have to have to put these in. Now, what we have to do before these go into the car is they have to be properly gapped. The WRX really prefers a 0.02 to a 0.022 gap, and that's what we're gonna be using to put these into the car. All right, so we have the new plugs here ready to go. These old plugs, when I measured them out with my feeler gauge, actually came out to about 0.02 on the gap. So I'm going to match that because I don't want the engine to change at all and I want it to know what's going on. So I'm going to gap these new plugs to 0.02, which when you see our feeler gauge here, 0.020, and that's going to create the accurate amount of space between the actual plug and the top there. So if you look, you can actually fit this right into that gap and it rubs against it so you know it's right at about 0.02. So let's go ahead and gap all these plugs and we'll get them in the car. Okay, so all of the new plugs are now pre-gapped and ready to go into the car. I gapped them all to that 0.20 range and if it's too big, what you can do is, if the gap is too big, you just push down on this here, you can press it into a table or something where you're not gonna break it and just bend this top part down just a little bit and that is how you gap a plug. So now well, these are ready to go back into the WRX. Okay, so we're gonna use the original assembly that we used to pull out the plugs. And the one thing that you have to be very careful and make sure that you have on there, I'm trying to get to focus, is you can see it has a crush washer around the inside of the threads there. Now that crush washer is gonna be very important when you put it back in. Once you start feeling the crush washer mating with its surface, on the inside of the engine, you only need to go about half a turn more and then you start to feel it crush a little bit and that's all you need. Spark plugs do not go in very hard. So let's go ahead and get those in now and we'll start reassembling the engine. All right, so all the plugs are now back in the engine. They are tightened correctly. Like I said, once you feel it start to get snug, you only do about half a turn more until you feel that crush washer start to crush in and make contact with that surface. So it doesn't have to be very, very strong, just nice and snug and that is it so now we're going to go ahead and reassemble everything the coil packs are going to go back in on top of the spark plug just make sure when you're putting it back in you feel the tip of the spark plug start to guide into this hole here because if you don't then it's going to jam up in the inside of that little uh, alley there and then it's not going to give it the proper spark so just make sure that it goes in you won't have to force anything it should just slide right in so this one here you'll notice it'll start to you just kind of feel where it starts to glide in and it just pushes right in. You don't have to force anything and you'll actually feel it. Now, one way, if you're just trying to learn and you wanna see how it feels to make sure you're on it, if you pull it out, it should make a nice pop sound like you can hear right there. So you know you were on it correctly if it makes that nice little pop because it actually has a little bit of suction when you pull it free. So let's go ahead and do that to all of the plugs and start reassembling everything. And there we go. We have everything reinstalled. We have the intake and intake duct reinstall. The ECU is bolted back in properly. Make sure this is bolted in good because surprisingly, it actually uses this bracket as a sort of ground. Um, I've actually noticed when I've built these cars before, when you uh, have the battery plugged in, which you shouldn't have the battery plugged in uh, when you're doing this, but I accidentally had it plugged in and I was removing the ECU and I noticed there was a little spark and it's because this actually does use this bracket as kind of a ground. So make sure that's bolted in really good. And then we have the battery back in, of course, and we are ready to start this thing up. All right, so now comes the time to start the car and make sure it turns on and runs okay. You're gonna be looking for signs of misfire. You're gonna hear it either in the intake or in the exhaust, and that's gonna be just from the engine misfiring because the sparks are not correct. Either they're gapped wrong or they're not close enough or too far away. So let's go ahead and start it up and see how she sounds. new spark plugs that is how you do a spark plug job on a 2015 plus wrx 
FA20 engine. Hope this was super useful information for you guys. I love making these how-to videos. Good luck, guys. You got this.